Hello Mandeville, it's me Nick here, good to see you all, I've been missing you lots. Some of you will know me from having done Woodland Group with me, or Nurture Group, or maybe you've done Science Club with me in the past. Um, I'm currently working a little bit in the Robins bubble, so nice to see you if you're in that bubble at the moment. Anyway, as I was saying, I've missed you lots, um, but I'm here to tell you about something really exciting that I hope the whole school will be able to get involved in. Um, so this is an activity called the Big Garden Bird Watch. And uh, I'm currently in my back garden having a little look to see what birds are around. Um, the Big Garden Bird Watch is organised by a charity called the RSPB. Um, some of you might know what that stands for. It's the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. And they do a great job of looking after our wildlife. Every year they organise something called the Big Garden Bird Watch. It's actually the world's biggest bird survey and some of you might have got involved with it in the past. It's coming up at the end of January so if you want to take part in it, and I really hope you do, you can choose an hour sometime between Friday the 29th of January and Sunday the 31st of January. During that time what you will have to do is to choose that hour time slot and then you have to count the birds that land wherever you're looking. It might be you're just looking out of a, a window from your house, it might be that your family decide to go on a walk as part of your um, um, daily exercise that you're allowed to do, maybe in a local park or um, a field near your house, something like that. Okay, so you choose where you can do it and then you've got one hour to count the birds and you count the ones that land either in a tree or on the ground or maybe in a bush. Okay, so just to be clear, we need to make sure we understand, you can only count the number of birds that you see all together at the same time. So, if you see one blackbird and it comes and it lands where you're counting, you can count one blackbird. If that blackbird then flies off and then you see another blackbird later, you would still only say one blackbird because it might be the same bird that had flown off, flown away and then come back again. It might be the same one. but. If you see two blackbirds that, line, that land at the same time together, then you can put two down on your count. Okay. After the end of that hour, you have to submit your results and you can do that by logging on to the RSPB website. Now, you can actually register that you want to take part in the bird watch any time before next weekend. So you could do it now if you like. Okay. So if you go on to www.rspb.org.uk forward slash slash birdwatch then you will be able to register that you want to take part in the bird watch on there. Um, after you've done your count, then you can put your results on there and you've got until the 15th of February to do that. Now, it might be that you look out the window to do your bird watch or you go on a little walk to do your bird watch and you don't see any birds. Now, that would be kind of sad, but if that's what's happened, then the RSPB still want to know about it. In fact, that's just as important as for them to know what birds we don't see as the ones that we do see. Um, if they notice that there's certain types of birds that just aren't being spotted at all, then they can try to, to do something about that to, to encourage those birds to come back um, and, and live around us. But some of the birds are having quite a problem surviving these days, so um, it's important for us to try and learn about that and find out more. Taking part in the bird watch is great fun. Um, it always gives me a little bit of a lift, a little well-being boost um, to notice the wildlife around me and it also helps me to notice that there are signs, even now, that spring is on the way and that's quite a nice hopeful feeling to have. 
especially at this kind of time time of year and at a time of year when it, it's uh, this year in particular when uh, when things are a little bit harder for us all so I do hope you'll enjoy taking part um, there are some extra resources available to you if you go onto the RSPB website things like this might be quite useful this is a bird identification chart and um, if you go onto the website onto the resources bit then you could print this off if you've got a printer I know you haven't all got a printer but if you have you could you could even maybe print two copies off and then you could cut all these little pictures up and you could play maybe a snap game or a matching pairs game or something with it to help you learn all the different types of birds to get you ready before the, uh, the actual bird watch itself. Um, something else you might like to do is think about putting some food out for the birds before next weekend. Sometimes the birds take a little while to get used to, to, to find the food that we put out so the sooner you can do that the better. They also like if you put out some water for them you need to make sure it doesn't get frozen if there's any really cold days you might want to go and pour some warm water on it just to to make sure that it's not frozen solid and they can still drink it um, most of the supermarkets are selling bird seeds so i've bought some from sainsbury's recently i think they also do it in wilco um, and i think morrison's have got some bird seed as well so that would go down well and later on i'm going to post a few little videos as well one with a bird identification quiz on it for you to have a try with if you'd like to and one showing you how to make some nice special fat ball treats for the birds to help encourage them to come along so have some fun with it um, hope you'll in enjoy taking part um, you'll be able to recognize a few more birds hopefully by the end of next week and I really look forward to hear hearing how you're all getting on okay take care bye Hello again Mandeville, we're back in Nick's kitchen and today I've got a little bird quiz for you to help you identify some of the most common species of birds that you might see on the bird watch this weekend. So to start off with, anyone know what this one is? If you think you know, you can just shout it out. Okay, this is one of my favourites. The red breast is a good little indication, good thing to look out for. Um, these birds are usually on their own. They're very friendly little birds, sometimes referred to as the gardener's friend, and uh, they love to eat worms, and they sing a lot in the winter and the spring. Do you know it? Yes, it's a, it's a robin. I think all the robins class will certainly know that one. <laughs> right, next we have, it's a bird that's black in color, and this one has got an orange beak. It has the most beautiful singing voice. And um, this one is actually a male. The females of these are brown. They like to eat worms from people's lawns. And um, they love to scratch around in, in leaves as well. Do you know it? It's a blackbird. Now, just as, there are quite a few different birds which are black in colour, but the blackbirds you need to look for the orange beak. That's kind of a giveaway clue. If it's something like a crow, it will be all black, but it will have a black beak. So look out for that orange one. Okay, next one. Okay, this is actually one of the most common birds that there are. Um, he has a little sort of black bib and mask. And that means that he's a male, this particular one. He likes to live close to people and he's got a very chunky little beak. Can you see that? That's really good at cracking seeds open, which form most of his diet. So this sort of bird is gonna love it if you put some bird seed out. This is a house sparrow. Next one, I think lots of you will know this one. We get lots of them on the school playing field at Mandeville. Um, you can see them in parks, in gardens, in woods. They don't have a sweet singing voice, instead they make a kind of a loud sort of chattering sound. Um, you can see them all year round and they love shiny things. They're, they're thieves, they're the thieves of the bird world. They love, if they see anything shiny, 
and they will steal it and they'll take it away and put it in their nests. It's called a magpie. And sometimes we talk about magpieing ideas, that means kind of stealing or borrowing ideas. And we say to magpie things because, because of the way they like to steal things. Right, what have I got next? Oh. <laughs> Again, another one that we see a lot um, in the grounds of Mandeville. When this bird flies, it kind of makes a clapping sound because its wings kind of clap together as it flies. It likes to eat plants and seeds and it nests out of reach in a tree. Sometimes they look quite fat, these birds. <laughs> it's a wood pigeon. Ah, oh, now this one might be a bit more tricky because we don't, it's got this red breast, but it's not a robin. A robin would have more brown feathers than this one. This one is a chaffinch. This next one's one of my favourite little birds. Very sweet little fella he is. Um, this type of bird belongs to a group of birds. There's lots of them, lots of different types. Do you know what group it is? Shout it out if you think you know. It's a group of birds called the tits. Now, this particular one has got a little blue cap and that gives us a clue as to what sort of tit it is. You think you know? It's a blue tit. Well done. Now, the next one is another sort of tit, but can you see he hasn't got a blue cap? He's just got black on his head and a fairly short tail. This one is a great tit. This next bird is another one that we see a lot on the playing field at Mandeville. In the winter, he only has a small black spot on his head, but in the summer, his whole head turns black. And that helps us to know its name, but it's a bit tricky in the winter when its head is mostly white. <laughs> it's called a black-headed gull. I've got one more for you. This is another bird that sometimes you see an awful lot of them together. Um, and just as the sun's going down, as it's getting into evening time, you sometimes see them grouping together in massive kind of swarms that swoop and glide across the sky, making a beautiful pattern, almost like a cloud of birds all moving together. Um, and that pattern is called a murmuration. I've seen a few murmurations recently over just quite close to Mandeville School, down at the, uh, the Marlborough Pavilion off Cotton Mill Lane. Um, if you go down there about 4.15 at the moment, um, then sometimes there are some really beautiful, spectacular shows of, of starling murmurations. And I've told you the name there, starlings. Although you can see quite a lot of them, Starlings are one of the birds that's really, really decreased in number in recent years. Um, and that's the sort of thing that the RSPB really want to, to know about and to find out about, um, which is where you can help by taking part in the RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch this weekend. I hope this little quiz has helped you to recognise some birds. You can play it back again if you want to test yourselves and see if you can remember all the ones I've shown you. Good luck this weekend. I look forward to hearing all about it. Bye everyone. Hello Mandeville, it's Nick here. Um, I'm talking to you from my kitchen table. Um, welcome. I've got some daffodils, a little hopeful sign that spring is on the way, even though it still feels very, very wintry. I always find daffodils a lovely hopeful symbol. We especially need that this year, don't we? Now, today I want to show you a few ways that you could feed the birds, a few simple things that you could try. I've got various 
different bits and pieces um, that you might like to have a go at. Um, the birds really need our help at the moment because especially with the ground all frozen it's very difficult for them to get enough food and um, also very hard for them to get enough water so if you do nothing else then just putting a simple bowl of water out for the birds on your balcony in your garden could be a real lifesaver for them so you can imagine that you know if everything's frozen and you can't even get a drink that's going to be pretty tough so that's the first thing that we can do um, but you could also try making some different bird seed feeders and um, this will help encourage more birds to come to your garden or your balcony um, or your windowsill whatever you've got um, and that's what we want especially if you're going to be taking part in the big garden bird watch which I hope you are this weekend so bird feeders I've gathered together a few bits and pieces that I had in my kitchen um, you might not have all of these things but you might have some of them and you might be able to cobble something together with what you've got so first of all I've got some lard now for making seed feeders lard is is a really good type of fat to put in it's really high in energy um, and the birds really need that at this time of year so you could use that however um, this does have some some meat in it um, so um, if you are halal then you might want to try a vegetable version you could try something like this vegetable suet this what this sort of thing though you do have to melt in the microwave first um, or in a pan on on the hob so you need to get an adult to help you do that if you're going to do the vegetarian version but if not a bit of lard will be a great thing to start off with so i'm going to open this up i'm going to cut a chunk it's going to be about about a quarter of this big block of lard a knife. So you can just use the normal sort of knife that you'd use to eat with at meal times. It doesn't need to be too sharp. And you're going to cut a chunk, about a quarter of it, something like that, and put it in a bowl. Now, lard does tend to be has a bit of a, sm a nasty smell about it. I don't really like this smell. Um, but like I say, it's really, really good and energy rich for the birds. We're going to use a spoon to try and soften it because it's very hard at the moment. So you need to give it a good squidge. Now, um, to get a bit of power behind it, I'm going to put my finger on there so that I can really sort of push down on the lard in the bowl. If you're doing this with a brother or sister, you could take it in turns, maybe have a couple of squidges each. Can you see what I'm doing? squashing it all down okay so that's the lard if you're doing the vegetable version then just melt it um, in in a microwave on the hob um, and just be very careful because it will be hot when it first comes out you need to cool it down a little bit before you can touch it um, once you've got your lard or your vegetable suet softened like that then you're going to decide what sort of bird feed you're going to make so if you happen to have lying around your house a loo roll or this one's from a kitchen roll this might be a good way to go so if you've got one of these you need to make a couple of little holes in the top I've got a metal skewer I'm going to do this with. Now you obviously need to be a bit careful that you don't spike yourself. Get a grown-up to help you if you need it. Two little holes through the top. There we go. And then I'm just going to use a piece of string. Or you could use a bit of wool or ribbon or whatever you can find lying around the house. And we're going to try and thread that through those holes that we made. You might want to use something sharp like a skewer to try and push it through the holes. The holes are a bit small. There we go. Right, now I can hang that 
Oh, I could tie this in knots. I do always hang it, hang it up later on. Now, if you're doing your feeder this way, then I think the easiest thing to do is to get the knife, get some of your softened fat, and just sort of spread it all over your toilet roll. A bit like this. nice and soft don't worry if you do get some of your ha on your hands you can just wash it off afterwards but you'll need to use some soap or washing up liquid to kind of break the fat down otherwise it's a bit hard to wash off right i'm happy with that so i've spread it with the fat i'm going to put that there for a minute have a look at it um, and then here I've got some, some bird seed. Now I bought this one in Morrison's. Um, I think most of the supermarkets are doing bird seed at the moment and Wilco's have got some as well. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just pour some onto a plate. That should be enough. Then I'm going to take my kitchen roll and I just roll it in the seeds and oh gosh that's working really really well can you see how all those seeds are sticking on really nicely wonderful and once you've got it all covered in seeds you can just go and hang that up in your garden when you're hanging up your seed feeder make sure if you've got a cat or maybe some of your neighbours have got a cat, try and hang it in a branch so that uh, it's not going to be too dangerous for the birds to come and get it. Try and think of a, a place that's going to be safe from the cats. Right, let's leave that one over there for now. Another thing you might like to try is mixing. I'm going to use this leftover seed here. I'm going to tip it in with my fat and you can mix that seed into the fat, get it all nicely covered. You can do it like that. Once you've mixed it all up, you pick up a nice lump and you can just mould it into a little ball. And you can make a bird lollipop if you've got a little stick. I've got a wooden skewer here, but you could just go and get find a stick from the garden or local park if you're out for your daily exercise. And you can just stick the stick into that soft ball. And there we have a bird lollipop. I love that, giving lots of energy and nutrition. And you can just spike it, stick it into your um, lawn or maybe in the flower pot on the balcony or windowsill something like that um, so the birds can come and have a nice nibble of that now um, the last type of seed feeder that I'm going to show you uses a yogurt pot so this will be for a hanging feeder um, and what I've done with this again I use my spiky skewer to just make a hole in the bottom again be very careful not to spike yourself little hole in the bottom there. Get the grain up to help you if you need it. And I need another piece of string. This time I'm going to tie a knot on the end of my string. I've made a loop and I'm going to tuck this round a few times because I want it to be quite a nice big knot. Just pull it tight like that somebody to help you if you need it. That's my knot. Now I'm going to try and thread this end through the bottom of my yoghurt pot. I'll pull it out the top. So there's my knot. It's going into the pot and now that can hang upside down like that. And then you simply need to fill that up with your seedy mixture. You can squash it in If 
fill it all the way up to the top I've just run out of mixture here I'm gonna to have to go and make a little bit more but you can see I've just stuffed it into the, the top there like that make sure it's stuck down nicely and then you can just go and hang that into a tree okay right have fun with it and um, wish you lots and lots of luck with the bird watch at the weekend take care everyone see you soon bye bye <laughs>